Hey friends, welcome back. I hope you had a few minutes working on your math facts, whether with a friend, a family member, with flat, using flashcards, you could use your fact triangles with those, or maybe you just did a math worksheet to practice those facts. We want you to be able to ha do them and do them quick. Now, I'm gonna talk you through the math boxes. We're gonna do this set together because it's the beginning of the year and we do them together. This is what your worksheet is going to look like. Um, mine is going to look a little bit different because I'm doing it on the computer, but you're gonna see I'm gonna go through the different questions, okay? So question one on this says, draw a polygon with six sides. So give me a second here. I'm going to change my computer. This is what mine looks like. So remember, a polygon is a closed shape. This, oh, coconuts. This is not a polygon because this side here is not closed. So this is not a polygon. Um, let's try another one. This is not a polygon because it's got curves on it. This curved line here makes this not a polygon. It's made with just straight lines. So we want it to be closed and we want it to have straight lines. Okay, here comes the eraser. I'm gonna get it out really. Ooh, I'm doing a good job with my erasing right now. And we want to make sure that okay i can turn off the eraser and i'm going to go back to black okay it says to, we've talked about what a polygon is and now we need to do one with six sides so i'm just going to draw six lines i want to make sure it gets closed i'm left-handed so sometimes i work a little backwards but here you can see i've got this kind of shoe box it looks like a, a square shoe that's how i draw shoes but it has one two three Four. Here's side number five right there. Oh, that's a terrible looking arrow, Mrs. Rademacher. And here is side six. That is a polygon with six sides. Now, the next one I'm going to draw is probably one you're familiar with. If you've ever been in my classroom, I have what we call a hexagon table. The prefix hexa means six. And I've made my hexagon table with two trapezoids. So here's one trapezoid table, and here's the other trapezoid table. Uh-oh. Oh, pen. What is going on with you, you silly pen? Come on. No, draw the end of it. I don't know why my pen is giving me so much trouble right now. Come on, pencil. Hmm, I don't want to scroll down. Oh, it seems to want to scroll down right now. Let me switch over here. Here's my activity kit. I don't want that. I don't know what this means. I'm just playing with buttons here. I'll try drawing this line here. There we go. Uh-oh, I didn't make my, tra my hexagon perfect, but the line tool helped me make some nice straight lines. And here you can see, again, I've got one. Uh-oh, I keep wanting to write with this. Somehow it's in this weird mode. You can see I've got one. Nope, it's going to want to go down again. So you can see, count the sides. I've got six sides total on this one. That's question number one. Let's go on to question number sure. two. All right, I'm back. And this one is asking us to choose um, a figure with that is a rectangle. Remember, the rectangle has four sides and four corners or 90 degree angles. So I look at this very first one here and I say, oh, it does not have four sides. This is not a rectangle. How sad. Okay, I'm gonna look at this next one. This one does have the four sides, one, two, three, four, but look at these angles. These angles are not 90 degrees. We don't have a rectangle. Okay, let's look at this one. We've got the four sides, one, two, three, four, and we've got the corners or the 90 degree angles. And so the good news is this one is a rectangle in my pen. Here we are on problem number three. 
Problem number three asks us how much of the shape is colored? Well, I wanna show you that first of all, we look at this rectangle, there's that rectangle we were looking for in problem two, and we see that this shape is broken up into about two equal parts. One part is blue, one part is white. So when we look at it and we go to write a fraction, we're gonna put the two equal, almost equal, unless if I'm drawing it, parts on the bottom because we have two parts that are almost exactly the same. For the top, we are going to look at this part here that is shaded, and we only have one of the two parts that is shaded. So one out of one out of two parts or one half of this shape is colored. Okay, we're on problem four right now. Um, and this question is asking us how many equal shares are there? Just like we talked about in problem number three, we want to see how many pieces are equal. So first we look, are they about the same? And I look at problem or the first circle and I see that we've got one, two that are about the same. So we have two equal shares in this first one. Then we count, I look at the second circle and I notice that most of the pieces are about the same. If you see me drawing it, you know, it's not gonna be exactly perfect, but I can still see that there are one, two, three, four equal shapes or so, or shares. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as four. I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of my chicken scratches or some of my drawings so it's a little neater for you while you get those set up. Now, this is where it gets interesting because there's another direction and it's right here. It says to color one of the larger shades or shares. Well, these shares are small, so that's not a good, this is not, any of those would not be good ones to color. I can choose this one or I can choose this one. What I am gonna choose is a smaller pencil and a different color. Um, blue is my happy color, so I'll take and I'll color in and I'll just kind of shade in. I could have done the second side too, but I've got sides one and two of that. So here we are in question five. Question five is a word problem. And most of you are probably able to go ahead and read it, think about it, and come up with some kind of answer. But I wanna to talk to you a little bit on this problem about a strategy we use in second grade. Um, when we see a word problem, Dr. Rushline always wants us to write R U T A C root of C. You might remember those words from first grade, but I have a fun little um, cheer that goes with it. I always say R-U-T-T-A-C. Tell me what it means to me. Read, underline, think, attack, check, rudacy. Oops, rudacy. So I'm gonna read the problem here. It says you have 40 cents. You buy a pencil for 30 cents, how much do you have left? And they want us to do the number model and the unit. So we've read the problem, I can cross that up. Now I'm gonna underline. You, now when I underline, I use a specific strategy. First of all, I'm gonna go through and I'm going to circle any numbers I see in the problem. So I see we have 40 cents and I see that we buy a pencil for 30 cents. Then I'm actually gonna underline the question. They wanna know how much do we have left? Now, that's a big clue, that word left. You probably heard me in, um, stress, left. How much you have left? That means we are probably going to do some kind of operation for it. Well, let me think about it. If I go to the store and I buy something, buy is another big word, I'm probably going to have to give away or have subtract some of my money. So I'm gonna circle buy or put a box around buy and a subtraction sign. 
because I'm going to be subtracting. Then I am going to go ahead and write my unit. My unit is cents, um, and I'm ready to think about it. Well, like I said, I know I've got 40 cents. I'm buying something, which means I'm taking it away, and I need to find out how much I have left. Here is my number model, 40 minus 30 equals question mark, because I still have not solved this problem, but I have a plan for it. Next, I'm going to try to attack it. Well, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw some coins. These are actually dimes, but every dime is worth 10 cents. And I've got four of them in my pocket at the store. So when I go to buy one, I'm going to cross them off. So I'm going to cross off 10, 20, 30 cents. And that leaves me with... 10 cents left over, so my answer is 10 cents. So I've attacked it. Now I'm gonna check it. Does it make sense that I would have 10 cents left over? That I have less than what I walked in with? Yes, it does. Can I prove it a different way? Sure, I proved it with my, um, with my work. That looks right, so I'm gonna cross off that I checked it, and that is how we use rudacy to solve a word problem. Now we're going to go on to problem number six, where we find the missing rule oops, and the missing numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I don't have a rule. This is an in and out box. And I need to figure out if my number, when it goes in, does it get bigger or smaller when it comes out? Well, I look over here at 12, and I know that 12 is bigger than 10. So when it comes out, the number is smaller. When the number is smaller, small, here's my big, I'll use the capital B. When that happens, I know that I subtract it. I took something away, something was lost. So here is my number line, here is 12, and I went backwards to 10. And the next question I'm gonna ask is, so I subtracted, because I went this way. So the next question is, is how much did I go back? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to change my pen color here, and I'm going to go back one, two spots on my number line. So I had one, two hops, so it looks like I am subtracting two on my number line. Okay, so we're going to go up to, I'm going to get out my big eraser, and I'm going to clean, uh, no, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to change my mind here. Now, I'm going to skip this one because I don't know what is in and out yet. And I'm going to start here with 6. So, remember, I'm going to draw my number line. Here's my 6. 7, 8. Now I'm going to go backwards. 5, 4. And I start here on 6. Remember, I'm going backwards, so I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to go 2 hops one, two, and that puts me at four. Remember, pause this if things don't make sense. If you need to go back and rewind, do that as well. Okay, this is where it gets interesting, is this one right here. See that? Okay, I know that at the end of two hops, I'm going to end up at zero. So after two hops, I end up at zero. What number would I get to if I worked backwards instead of hopping backwards? I'm going to actually add. So instead of subtracting, I'm going to add two, and you will see from zero to two is one, two hops, one, two. 
So our answer here is two. That one was really tricky because we had to work backwards. When you work backwards, we had to change addition to subtraction, and that was a little tricky. I'm gonna check this one though, cause that seems screwy. It says I put in two, I subtract, and my rule is to take away two, so I'm gonna put that in a box, cause we'll use those boxes later. Two take away two is zero. I agree, yay.